Welcome to the SAS Club How To series in which we aim to answer the questions posed by our community and give you three actionable takeaways. I'm Alex Seymour, CEO of SASDOC, which helps companies uh, get traction, grow and scale. Uh, and today I'm joined by Ari Helgerson, investor at Index Ventures. Welcome, Ari. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, good to have you here. Um, uh, well, this, we're, 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 we're chatting just ahead of, uh, of, of SAS stock uh, EMEA, which is, uh, which is taking place uh, on the 12th to the 15th of October. Uh, and we know that Index Ventures have just published a, 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 a mammoth report uh, on uh, in, internationalization, Destination USA. So I thought when this question was posed by our community, how to prepare for internationalization, uh, that this was perfect timing to ask you to come on and, uh, and answer that question. So, uh, so Ari, how do you prepare for internationalization? Yeah, so um, before I jump in, you know, we've been doing this for 25 years, supporting tech companies in internationalizing to the US from Europe. And uh, the study we did um, uh, encompasses kind of 275 European and Israeli startups that have expanded to the US in the last eight years, including 33 unicorns. So we did a lot of in-depth interviews with founders of those unicorns, um, including you know, Spotify, UiPath, Adyen, and, and lots of others. So there's lots of stuff in the book on how to do it, and it's available on our website, uh, indexventures.com. But in terms of the sort of three major things uh, that you need to do, um, I would focus on, first of all, figuring out what kind of, kind of company are you? And we have an app online um, where you can kind of figure out what type of archetype you are, figure out you know, what that means for how you should be thinking about expansion with lots of case studies from each archetype. The second thing is you know, prepare the ground. So I'm gonna talk about some specific things you can do to get things going. And then the final thing is you know, jumping in and, and executing. So I'm gonna talk about each of those three, if that sounds good. Sounds good, sounds good, let's, go. let's do it. Cool, so the first thing you need to do is figuring out what kind of company you are. Um, and the top reason we found when speaking to entrepreneurs for why they expand to the US, it's really about access to customers. Um, so, you know, US so software spend by enterprises is more than double that of Europe and is also growing faster than Europe. So if you want to build a kind of iconic global SaaS company, uh, you really need to be thinking about where's your major market and you need to be thinking about the maturity of the customers and, and, and the competition. Uh, and so it's really a kind of personality test type tool um, that you can use to run through scenarios and kind of look at what your expansion path into the US might look like. Uh, for SaaS companies, there are kind of two major archetypes that we talk about. Um, so one is, we call it the compass, uh, which is really the one where you kind of build it in Europe, but sell in the US. And so common examples of that might be Calibra, Mimecast, Algolia, UiPath, so often the sort of bigger ticket enterprise sales focused uh, companies. Um, and then the second archetype is the telescope, um, which is much more common for kind of bottom up, high velocity uh, SaaS companies like Typeform or Pipedrive or, or, or Intercom to, to some extent. Um, and those companies tend to kind of focus on the US market while maintaining some center of gravity uh, in Europe still. Um, and sort of thinking through what kind of company you are and your motivations for why you're expanding to the US will give a lot of good pointers to, you know, when should you be making the leap um, and to think about, you know, what your journey might look like. Um, and there are lots of uh, sort of founder interviews and case studies in the book that will help you assess, you know, where you fit in and, and, and what might be the right time. The second thing to do is to start preparing the ground. And this is really where you start the, the real work. Um, and sort of specifically that often means setting up a task force. So you can either appoint someone on your team or a freelancer to, to do the sort of work. It's, it's a sort of consulting like, strategy consulting like exercise. Um, you preferably want someone who's quite analytical with some go-to-market experience and importantly, an understanding of the US context. So it might be someone that lives in the US or 
uh, an expat uh, from the US or, 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 or a European who's you know, lived there. So you want someone who can, who can sort of hit the ground running and, and sort of get a feel for what the, what the market is like. Um, you then sort of typically want to give yourself a three month research timetable to dig into key questions um, that will allow you to get to a sort of go no go decision. And the core questions that you're digging into in, in this stage is really kind of, you know, understanding the market, doing in-depth customer research. Um, in some ways, you're really kind of finding product market fit all over again. It's surprisingly rare that you can take a SaaS product and sort of just plonk it down in the US if you've been selling in Europe without any product tweaks. There, there are definitely going to be some tweaks that you need to make. And so it's important that you start to have customer conversations and someone that's responsible for figuring out what those product tweaks are likely to be. Uh, third, you want to do competitor research, positioning. You know, you ultimately want to be in a position where you can pitch against all your competitors in the US and win. So you really want to understand their strengths and weaknesses and, and position accordingly. Um, you will want to do product localization, Fifth, you want to do kind of location recommendations. So you want to look at, you know, do you want to be East Coast, West Coast, somewhere in between? Um, there are lots of, you know, pros and cons to pretty much every city you could think of um, setting up in. And, and so you want to do a kind of structured, uh, structured analysis of the different options and, and, and figure out which one works for you. Then you have the regulatory context, especially if you're selling into financial services or you're in healthcare or, or other regulated industries, you, you want to make sure that you're doing your homework on regulatory stuff uh, well in advance because, you know, licensing can take quite a long time. Uh, then you have operational considerations, all the legal, financial, HR, IP, subsidiary structuring, et cetera. Um, get your lawyers involved there and sort of figure out what that might look like. You want a pre and post launch timetable that you need to come up with. Uh, and then finally, a kind of year one budget and hiring plan. And on the budget, the really important thing to remember is that you want to kind of have different contingencies and you want to be planning for success, ideally. So you want to be kind of thinking about what are the things I'm looking for that will tell me when it's time to double down. And in the early days, it might be okay, we've identified product market fit. We have all our ducks in a row when it comes to uh, regulatory stuff and we're ready to just you know, go for it and execute. Um, and that could be a good trigger for putting more budget, you know, hiring more people, et cetera. So you, know, you have an initial budget and then you sort of have to be quite structured about thinking about what are the kind of lessons learned or hypotheses that you need to prove in order to double down on, on expansion. Um, so that's kind of the second point, preparing the ground. Um, the final piece is really on the execution. So, you know, once you've got your plan in place, you know that you want to expand, you know what that's going to look like, you have a budget against it. Um, you really want to kind of jump in both feet and really commit to the U.S. expansion. And this is another common pitfall uh, I've seen uh, quite a lot of, which is that your companies might put a few people, put a landing team together uh, in the US and then sort of fail to really double down or really commit to it. And, and that can lead to kind of cultural problems where you know the US expansion team doesn't feel adequately supported. And it can mean that you know the opportunity might be there, but you're not resourcing uh, sufficiently to really make that team successful. And so the commitment is really important, which is why you want to make sure that you've, you know, paired it with having enough money in the bank to really invest uh, properly in the expansion. Um, so execution means getting the landing team in place. Uh, ideally, every person on the landing team needs to have an essential set of skills. Um, that are relevant in the early days, it's typically sort of more go-to-market oriented. And they also should be carriers of the company culture. So you want to bring people, preferably who've been at headquarters in Europe um, and sort of really understand what the company is about, have a deep understanding of, 
both the product and the culture and how you work, um, who, who will sort of form that uh, initial uh, launch party. And typically this will consist of, you know, two to four individuals in the beginning. Uh, some will be quite senior, uh, one or two of them will be uh, more junior. Um, and you're mostly looking at the sort of commercial skill set, so sales, marketing. Uh, you may want to add a product person or at least a developer or two if there's a lot of localization and product work that's required. Um, and then get the visa process going and, and prepare for the move. Uh, the big question that comes up at this point is always should a founder move, yes or no? Um, I tend to sort of lean towards yes. It it's somewhat goes back to the archetypes. So for the sort of compass archetype where most of the market is in the US and you're really looking to kind of build the, the commercial side of the business in the US, you pretty much have to have a founder move. Um, and, um, and so it's important that a founder goes with that initial landing team. Uh, but in other cases, it's, it's not a necessity the, the main thing to consider is that it's important that things are sort of stable and humming along nicely in the uh, headquarters uh, before a senior person moves across to the US just to ensure that there's still someone who can kind of steady the ship and, and, and run things day to day at headquarters while one founder or one senior individual from the management team uh, figures out the US expansion. So th those would be kind of the, 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 the three points um, that uh, I would highlight, but there's obviously a lot of nuance and a lot more to be said about any one of them. Awesome, well, Ari, thanks so much for distilling it down in, into to three points. And uh, you know, I look forward to reading Destination USA, which of course I think we'll, we'll cover that a lot more uh, in depth uh, and, and find that at uh, indexventures.com. Uh, so, Ari Helgerson, thank you so much for, for joining us today on the, on the How To series uh, and sharing that answer on how to prepare for internationalization. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thank you.